When Joan was only one year old, she already knew where she was going. Going right, left, no, straight up. When she was five, she was writing, Dear Father Christmas, I don't want a doll, and I don't want a big red ball. What I want is a pair of silk stockings, and I mean silk, not artificial. She was 12 before she got her first pair of silk stockings, and they were artificial. See? All the other girls are waiting to catch the bus. And waiting. Look at her, here she comes, straight for the milk van. Is she going to get a lift? She is. At 18, she's a working girl and she still knows what she wants. A boy wants to take her to the movies, twice a week, if she'll let him. She would rather have a dinner at the best hotel in town, even if he can only take her once a month. There she is, that tall, skinny girl. Will he take her? He will. She's 25 now, and in one thing she's never changed. She still knows where she's going. Good evening, Miss Webster. Good evening, Leon. Hello, darling. I got your telegram. I thought you were spending your holiday at home. Oh, I'm sorry, darling, but you see me every weekend or nearly... Did you bring my money? Yes. Here you are. 47 pounds, 10 and 9. Would you sign the receipt and count the money? You don't mind my taking it all out? It's your own money. As your bank manager, I prefer you to leave the account open. As your father, I... Uh, nothing for me, thank you. Oh, but you must have something tonight. You'll have a sherry. You know you love sherry. And the usual for you, Miss Webster? Thank you. What do you mean, the usual? He meant gin and dubonnet. You have no consideration whatever for my position. Oh, darling, be reasonable. Just think of all these girls here. They've all got fathers who have positions. Not everybody's father's a bank manager. Thank you, Miss. Darling, please stop being a bank manager for once. Just be my father for tonight. Now, look here, Joan. I've come all the way here from Ecclesall. And you know I don't like being seen in expensive places like this. And you know what my clients will say if... Daddy, I'm going to be married. What? Your table, Miss Webster. Thank you, Fred. Let's go in, darling. Bring me a drink. Diamond, huh? Who is he? Excuse me. That's your works pass of the CCI. You can't marry Consolidated Chemical Industries. Can't I? There's no other name on this except your own. Then... You can't Just what I do mean. Robert Berenger's one of the wealthiest men in England. Anything wrong with the soup, Miss Webster? We were talking, it's cold now. Will you take it away? Yes, certainly. Now, look here, Joe. Stop acting. Not Lady Bellinger yet. <laughs> anyway, you'll come with me to the station. Tonight? I'm picking up the Scotch Express there. You're going to Glasgow? Further, the Western Isles. Have you got your ticket? There's bound to be a queue. It's all arranged. Everything's arranged. I'm going to an island called Killoran. Where is it? In the Hebrides. It takes a day and a night to get there. It's his island. He's there already. We're going to be married there, away from people. Have you ever been there? Often. What? In my dreams. He's told me all about it. There's an old house. And, oh, the walls are a million miles away. There are the famous sands and sheep and birds and grey Atlantic seals. 
Billinger must be nearly as old as I am. And what's wrong with you, darling? Come on, Daddy, let's dance. No, no, John. Oh, come on, Daddy, you can dance. You taught me to dance. Good evening, Hunter. Good evening, Miss Boyd. You follow me. Excuse me. I hope you will be comfortable, Miss. Thanks, Miss Hunter. I managed to prevent them from putting you over the wheel. It's lovely, Hunter. See you in the morning, Miss Webster. Yes, please. We get in at six thirty. If I call you half an hour before, will that be all right? Yes, thank you. Very good, Miss Webster. Thanks, Mr. Hunter. It was very clever of you to get us sleep, Hunter. Sir Robert's orders, Miss. Not so easy these days, all the same. We have our method, sir. This is my father. How do you do, sir? Here is an itinerary that I had prepared at Sir Robert's desire. Would you be so good as to study it? You will see that when you arrive at Glasgow, you change to Buchanan Street Station. Uh, Mr. McAllister, a director of the Bellinger Metal Works, will meet you on your arrival at the Central. You arrive at Oban in Argyleshire at 11.30. Just leaving, at sir. Oh, almost, Excuse me. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Hunter. Goodbye, Hunter. Goodbye, Hunter. Goodbye, Daddy, darling. Send me a wire. I'll be back in a week. Hunter will give you the address. Goodbye, my darling. God bless you. Goodbye, Hunter. Goodbye, miss. My very best wishes for your future happiness. And don't forget to write. And darling, don't worry about me. I know where I'm going. I know where I'm going. And I know who's going with me. I know who I love. But the dear knows who I'm loving. to Isle of Killoran, Scotland. Um, Manchester. Departure 1.10 a.m. from Platform 1. Preston. 2.27 a.m. My handsome winsome Johnny. Glasgow. Motorship Lock in Var. 1.15 p.m. Sails from the Western Island. Consolidated chemical industries. Can't I? Do you, Joan Webster, take consolidated chemical industries to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. And do you, Consolidated Chemical Industries, take Joan Webster to be your lawful wedded wife? Good evening, Lady Berenger. Everything's arranged. Everything's arranged. Everything's arranged. Everything's arranged. Charge to your account, madam. Of course. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. Perfect fit. We'll send it, madam. We'll send it, madam. We'll send it, madam. 500 guineas. 500 guineas. To you, madam. Thank you, madam. Lady Berenger's car. You'll take the high road and I'll take the low road and I'll be in Scotland for me. Next station, Gretna Green. You're over the border now. Glasgow Central! Oh! Yes? There's a gentleman to meet you, and the station master's with him. Miss 
Mr. Webster? Yes. Uh, I'm McAllister. How do you do? This is Mr. Tinney. How do you do? It's a grand day. It is. You'll need all your time to get to Buchanan Street. Come here. Webster. I'm David McBrain's agent. That's a fine day. Miss Webster. How do you do, Captain? Yes, yes. I had a letter about you from Mr. Lee. It is your first visit to the island. Yes, it is. It is a sublime day. It's a pity about the day. An hour ago it was very pretty. Ah, but it never stays fine for long in the Isles. You will soon get used to it. Are you for Killoran, Miss Webster? Yes. Is it far to Port Erig? Quite a step if you walk. Only 40 minutes if you have a car. And you have a car. is down yonder behind the trees. That is my castle, the ancient home of the Maclean's of Eric. Where do they live now? Down there in Eric House. Ah, but they'll all be dead now or in New Zealand. There will only be Katrina Maclean. Is anyone allowed in the castle? Oh, yes, anybody can go in, except the lairds of Killoran. There's a curse on them. What sort of a curse? If they should ever set foot across the threshold. Man, they say it's a terrible, strong curse. Oh, machine! Hear me! I'd better go down. Will I take them for you? Oh, no, thank you. I can manage. I'd better wait a wee while. Rory Moore may not be willing to cross over to Caloran in this weather. Oh, no, my fiancé is coming over to fetch me. Oh, so the rich gentleman in spectacles is your fiancé? Yes. She will finish, do you tell me? Well, well, a thousand blessings on you both. Thank you. But in a fog like the one that's coming up, your fiancé won't see any better with six pairs of spectacles than with one. <laughs> Goodbye. Bien achlech. Good evening. evening. Oh. Bad luck, no crossing today. But isn't that the boat from Caloran? No. And if she was, it is not today she'd be getting back, my lady. That's the ferry boat. Pity you didn't keep Ian's car. That's why I was shouting. But we didn't understand. Why should I keep it anyway? To go back to Tobermory and spend the night in a comfortable bed. But I intend to spend the night on Caloran. Oh. Would you like to wait up at the house? I know the people. Thank you. But it's been arranged for the boat to meet me here, and I'd better be here to meet it. Good. It's the big house up the brig. He may have had no role at all. He's come back, Lauren. Fear come you, ma. Be me back, Lauren. Is that garlic you're talking? Yes, my lady. What would it be but the garlic? What's that noise? That would be the seal singing. The seal? Yes, yes, they like the warm, foggy weather. If my boat doesn't come, will you take me? No, I will not, my lady.
Fort Erik, 5.15 p.m. A motorboat from Kelloran will meet Miss Webster. May I be the first to welcome you to these marble halls, young lady? I was just going down to get you. Come on in. We've lit the fire. You'll meet the Colonel, I see. I've had that exceptional pleasure. My name's Barnstable. Colonel Barnstable, the greatest hawk trainer. Falconer, my dear <laughs> Torquil. The greatest falconer in the Western Isles. In the world, old boy. Katrina's out. She's our hostess. She's no idea you and I are here, but she'll find a corner for us. She's a grand girl, bless her heart. A grand girl. I've known her since we were kids. She married an Englishman called Potts. He's in the Middle East and the kids at boarding school. How's business, Colonel? Fair. I've got a new line now. Eagles. I've been training a golden eagle for seven months. An eagle? Hunting with it like a hawk? Ha <laughs> ha! That's shaken you. Where is it? I'd like to see it. Sorry, old boy. I lost him four days ago and I haven't got him back yet. Where did you see him last? On Gorry's Leap. I was trying with rabbits, and the blighter lost interest. Sailed off up Ben Tullock and disappeared in a cloud. Every day I'm out after him. I've trodden that blasted mountain almost into the ground. But I'll get him back. <laughs> Katrina! Here's the dear girl now. Torquil! Goomachree! Mrs. Potts! Oh, oh. <laughs> Brown stuff, this gaily. <laughs> Still got those half-starved hounds. How on earth do you manage to feed them? Oh, we live off the country. Rabbit, deer, and a stray hiker or two. <laughs> oh, what you expect me to do? Eat them myself just when the strain's getting known? Look, boy. How's that for bone? Look at that head, eh? Talk full of volock. It's good of you to come and see an old bag like me. Good evening. This is a fellow traveler to Caloran. Oh. Oh, I see. Rory wouldn't take you over. You're right, but I love you just the same. I came over on the midday bus just to see you. This is Miss... Um, Webster. Miss Webster. How do you do? How do you do? I'm sorry I didn't see you before. It's Torquil's fault. You'll stay here tonight, of course. Well, I don't want to be any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I haven't heard any intelligent female nonsense for months. <laughs> Besides, there's nowhere else you could go. Oh, don't worry, you won't have to sleep on the floor. Though the men will. I don't know which way you came in, but I suppose you noticed the place was knocked about a bit. Well, it did look a bit bleak. Oh, it's no wonder. <coughs> I've only just got rid of the boys. What boys? Well, the RAF, of course. I've had them for two years. Eighty of them, no less. But surely they'll compensate you for the damage. Oh, yes, they've been very fair about that. Apart from trying to sell me their concrete foundations. Uh, but I wasn't having any. Mm. No, they'll pay a lump sum or do the place up as it was. After the war, of course. Which are you going to take? That's the question, Torquil, my boy. McLean versus Potts. Up the McLeans. Pay no bass. Pay no bass. <laughs> Will you have a dram? Certainly. Help yourself. We'll get dinner. You let some your mongrel leave those rabbits alone. We'll make a pot. The colonel says you're a dead shot these days. <laughs> My dear talk, will I have a tip that'll improve your own shooting? After scrounging a few cartridges out of the local controller, find a sitting rabbit. Take aim. Say to yourself, if I don't shoot this rabbit, I don't eat. <laughs> and you don't miss. And she doesn't. What's your other name? Joan. Oh. Mine's Katrina. Can you skin a rabbit? 
Zvanjiva. Banho. <clears throat> That's a queer girl. What do you young chaps know about girls? Nothing, not a thing. Do you know as much as I do? Taming a woman must be worse than taming an eagle. Can't be done, old boy. It can't be done. How's the war treated you? Not bad. So a bit of the world. Been home much? Not for four years. Staying long? Eight days. Not much. Mm. There's a right way and a wrong way to skin a rabbit. I only know the wrong way. Colonel, you're wanted. On parade! Hear any bells, either of you? But I thought for a moment it was the old boy. Back again. Colonel! Right! What did he think he heard? His eagle. A little odd, isn't he? Who is it? Oh, it's Caloran. It looks huge. Six inch to the mile. If the wind gets up, it'll soon blow the fog away. Sounds as if it is. Are you staying long on the island? A few days. Know anyone there? Mm-hmm. It's a fine island. I know. Been there before? No, but I've heard all about it. Do you know it well? I've known it for 29 years. I shouldn't have thought you as old as that. Four years older. Are you staying on the island? I've got eight days' leave. I want to spend it there. Do you know Sir Robert Bellinger? No, I've never met him. Does he know you're going to Caloran? No. You know him? Very well. Nice chap. The nicest. Mm. I'd like to meet him. Well, you're bound to, aren't you, on a small island like Caloran? Oh, it's not so small. Well, I heard that you could walk from one end to the other of it in an hour and a half. Well, I suppose you can if you want to, but... Who wants to? There are better things to do. Such as? Shoot grouse, fish for salmon, bathe in Caloran Bay, picnic at Pig's Paradise. Where's that? On the North Shore. There's an eagle's eyrie there on Weinbrecht. I promised to take the colonel. Oh, so the colonel's going too? Yes. He's got a permit from Bellinger. So one does need a permit? In wartime for ordinary visitors, but I'm staying with the factor. He's got a house on the west side. Caloran House is near the lake, isn't it? The loch, yes. Who is it? It's me. I've just been outside. It's much clearer. With luck, we'll be able to cross in the morning. Oh, thanks for telling me. See you in the morning. Good night. Uh, Good night. You can see the trees now. In half an hour, you'll be able to see the shore. In half an hour, I shall be asleep. There's a grand view of Caloran from here, the northeast end. At sunrise, the light shines on the sands of Belnahar Bay. With a glass, you can make out the people walking about. Have you got a match or a lighter? Thanks. Thank you. Are you engaged? Yes. I'm going to be married on Caloran. It's an honor for Caloran. Well, may your pulse beat as your heart would wish. Thank you. Is it to be soon? Tomorrow, weather permitting. Have you got any beams in your room? Yes. Why? Come, count them before you go to sleep and your wish will come true. As easy as that? Only the first night under the roof. People in modern houses don't know what they're missing. Good night. I warn you, it doesn't work if you don't believe it.
Three, four, five. Please, Lord, don't let the wind drop and let it blow the fog away. Last for a day, it can blow for a week. It looks so near, in half an hour we could be there. In less than a second you could get from this world into the next. Can I speak to the island? By radio from the Coast Guard post. Can civilians still use it, Rory? Yes, yes. Where is the Coast Guard post? Tobamori. Can we get a car? No need, we can go by bus. Rory, we'll be at the Western Isles Hotel. I think perhaps we'd better move into the hotel. We're a bit of a strain on Katrina's household. Oh, yes, of course. All right, then. Breakfast. Oh, cheer up. Oh, I'm all right. Very difficult. Crazy! It was a compromise. Post office wanted it up the hill, Katrina down below. But why just here? It was a dry summer when they put it here. They forgot that when it rained... <laughs> Hello? <laughs> it's all right. You have a big room. What about you? Oh, I have a small one. hundreds of times. No. Haven't you really? Will you coming in now? No, I don't think so. But you needn't be afraid of the curse that's on the castle. What have you heard about that? Well, I know that it's upon the lairds of Caloran. I don't know whether the wives or rather the future wives of the lairds are involved. But I'll risk it. <laughs> I'd better introduce myself. I am MacNeil of Killoran. And I am the Laird of Killoran. Sir Robert Bellinger has only rented it for the duration. I see. There's not much difference. It's his for the time being, anyhow. Are you afraid? My father never entered Moya Castle, nor did my grandfather or his father, nor will I. How on earth can you stand it? Aren't you curious? No, it's always been like that. Shall we go? Sir, 
Are you not McNeil of Killoran? Yes. Oh, Castor Hamish. I knew you when you were a boy, Killoran. Knew your father well. My wife is from the island, from Race Bui. Katie Clark. Katie Clark. Mm -hmm. Then you're John McAllister. Yes, yes, you have your father's memory, Killoran. And are you back for good, Killoran? Only a week's leave. Oh, dear, dear. But it won't be long now. Ah, no, indeed. I'm waiting for the boat. How is everybody on Killoran? Hmm, now, well, now. They're fine. They're very fine. Uh, my son was after telling me about the rich man on Caloran, uh, him that is your tenant, Caloran. Like a little king he is. Yes, yes. yes my wife's second one. cousin, Hector McCodrum, was working up there the entire spring on a, a swimming pond he was building. A swimming pool? Oh, Gunya, Gunya, what foolishness. And the whole wide open sea to be swimming in. Aye, and the loch. Money spent is money earned. Ah, oh, yes, yes. My wife's second cousin was not complaining. <laughs> Pete does not fall from an empty creel. Uh, he has no care of money, the rich man of Killoran. He brings salmon with him from the mainland, and the water's here full of salmon. Who is fishing for salmon on Killoran? But who would be fishing when there's no one to be buying? So he would have to start buying before anyone would start fishing. <laughs> but can he now fish for himself? No, he cannot. He has the finest tackle from Glasgow, but uh, the fish don't know him. Yes, yes. The fish do not know him. No. What are all the guns for? Ah, oh, we're losing lambs. There's an eagle being seen. Aye, a golden eagle. I could hardly wish them good hunting. Hardly. You didn't mind what they said. I thought it was nonsense. Why shouldn't one build a swimming pool if one wants to? Personally, I like swimming pools. Not of taste. Exactly. I also prefer to call up the fishmonger if I want to eat some salmon instead of wading about knee deep in water waiting for salmon to pass by. Really? Really. The legend of. Corrie It's the second biggest whirlpool in Europe. It lies northeast of Caloran, just off Scarborough. Corrie means cauldron or whirlpool. Brecon was a prince of Norway. He sought the daughter of the Lord of the Isles in marriage. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, pool star. Hello, pool star. Hello. Is he on a kirk Go on. The Lord of the Isles refused to give away his daughter. Because he was a Scotsman. Except on one condition. Prince Brecon must anchor his galley in Cor of Brecon for three days and nights. What was the catch? The catch was that he thought he would be drowned. It's a terrible place when the tide's running, whirlpools form, and you can hear the roar for miles. And that's true, you can hear it from Killoran. I bet he anchored, though. What he did was to go straight back to Norway. There, he asked the advice of the old men. They told him to take three anchor ropes, one of hemp, one of... Wait a moment, one of... Back? Flax. Thank you, Mrs. Beaton. One of flax. And you'll know well what the third rope was made of, Killorn. Of course. The, th the third rope was made of the hair of maidens who were faithful to their lovers. The who room would have here a dinner? Go on. The maidens willingly gave their tresses, and Prince Brecon sailed for the Hebrides. The first night the hemp rope broke, the second night the rope of flax, Mrs. Beaton's rope broke, the third rope held fast. The third night... Hello, Tobermory. Hello, Tobermory. I love Killor and speaking. I love Killor and speaking. Over to you. Over. Hello, Killorn. Hello, Killorn. Tober Morris speaking. Tober Morris speaking. Tober Morris speaking. Miss Webster's here to talk to Sir Robert Bellinger. Stand by, please. Stand by, please. In the end, dear. <coughs> Hello, Robert. Uh, Joan speaking. I'm here in Tober Morris. I had a very good journey. Isn't it a shame about the weather? If you want Sir Robert to answer, say over to you. Over to you. Hello, my dear. Robert speaking. I'm glad to hear your voice at any rate. We're all ready here, ready and waiting, worse luck. 
Cartier delivered the ring, I hope. I hope you like it. I take it Hunter saw you off, over. Of course, Robert. Everything was lovely. Is there anything the matter with your voice? Have you got a cold? Over. Hello. No, no, I haven't got a cold. Why, sounds of my head. Now, listen, Joan, have you got a pencil? Write down a telephone number. Are you ready? 236. 236. You got it? It's the Robinsons' number. They've rented the castle at Sawn. Robinson's done a lot of work for me one way or another. He's one of the best. So is his wife. They're the only people worthwhile knowing around here. Ring them. They'll be glad to put you up. I'll be over to fetch you as soon as the gale blows out. Over. Uh, hello, Robert. I've got the number and I'll phone them, but I'd rather stay in a hotel. You don't mind, do you? Over. You like, my treasure. Do just as you like. I say, Joan, uh, Major Foster, McNeil's factor's here beside me. He's waiting to talk to Mr. McNeil. Is he there? I thought he was in the army. Over. Uh, hello, Robert. He's here and he's in the Navy. Well, goodbye, Robert. I hope to see you tomorrow. Over. Cheerio, my pet. It'll be a quiet wedding. <laughs> but full of surprises, I promise you. Chin up. You can always ring 236. This gale can't blow forever. Goodbye. Goodbye. Go ahead, Foster. Foster speaking. Hello, Killoran. It's good to hear you're back, even though you're stuck in Tobermory. Is there anything you want done? Over. Hello, Foster. Tell Duncan that I expect the trout to jump in the creel and the game to perch on the end of a gun. I've read all your reports. I'm longing to talk things over. Beneclect. Slan Levick, Killoran. <laughs> Goodbye, Tobermory. Over. Goodbye, Killoran. Goodbye, Killoran. How much is that, Mrs. Beaton? Well, it's, it's ninth pence each, Killoran. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, well, not can change that for you, Miss Webster. Yeah, Mrs. Beaton. I'll pay you back at the hotel. Good. She wouldn't see a pound note for one pension's date or not. People around here are very poor, I suppose. Not poor. They just haven't got money. It's the same thing? Oh, no. It's something quite different. Any messages? No, Mr. McNeil. Go straight in. Mr. Gentlemen. McNeil. Yes? I want to ask you something. Anything. Do you mind if we sit at separate tables at lunch? You do understand, don't you? Of course I don't mind. We are strangers, not even properly introduced. Yes, but you understand why I am asking you. I think you're the most proper young lady I've ever met. I take that as a compliment. Shifting all the time. It's gone from southwest right round the northwest since daylight. 
Where is it now? Blowing through every point of the compass at once. Rory says that if it settles in the northwest, but you know all that better than anybody. Poor beggar. I bet you're fed up to the gills. Oh, it's all right. I'm a patient man. I can wait. Now listen, Colonel, you're going to get into trouble. Eh? Ask the waterfall. Speak up, there's a good chap. What? Big bird, my foot. It's my eagle. That's what I'm trying to tell you. They're after it with shotguns. Ignorant clods. If they touch a fellow of old Torquil, I'll gore them. I've christened him Torquil. You don't mind, do you, dear chap? He reminds me of you. Oh, thanks. What? As to this outrageous accusation, I shall refute it. If lambs are listening, tend to one it's a fox or a wild cat. Well, I don't know anything about that. Every village bumpkin firmly believes the eagles carry off school children with satchels on their backs, bullets, anything. Absolute poppycock. Talk it over with Katrina. Don't do anything rash and ring me tomorrow. Hello, Piggy. It's an awful pretty day, Kiloran. It is. Is Miss Webster about? She's away. Away? Where? She was away in Ian Joseph's car before eight o'clock. She went to Eric. Then she came back here. She used the telephone. And she was away in the car again. <laughs> Family will be down in a moment, ma'am. Who's she? Miss Webster is going to see Mrs. Robinson. Can I offer you anything, Miss Webster? No, thanks. I've had breakfast. Are you Joan Webster? Yes. You're going to marry Sir Robert Bellinger, aren't you? Yes. Do you mind? I don't mind. He's rich, isn't he? Well, I haven't counted his money. Are you rich? No. Excuse me, madam. Can I have the afternoon off? Now, Martin, that's too bad of you to be playing bridge with Mrs. Crozier. I see, madam, then that's quite all right. What do you mean, it's quite all right? I'd intended to spend the evening at Axon Croish myself, madam. You, Martin, what do you mean? Has Mrs. Crozier asked you to make a fork? <laughs> no, madam. I'm invited by Mr. Campbell, Mrs. Crozier's head gardener. He's giving a Kaylee at his diamond wedding. Diamond wedding? <laughs> Fancy being married to you, Adam, for 60 years. Yes, well, if Mr. Robinson doesn't mind, I don't. We leave at four. Thank that's you. all right, Martin. Surely you told me Robert was having breakfast with us. No, my dear, I said that Robert's fiancée was coming to breakfast. And here she this is. This is wonderful. My dear, we're going to be such friends. That man woke me up when the telephone went and mumbled something. I had no idea you were here. I'd have been down in a flash. What did Robert say your name was? But there, we'll be calling you Lady Bellinger soon. Her name's Joan Webster. Good morning, Cheryl, darling. You, of course, know everything. If only we'd known that you were stranded here. You brought your luggage, of course. You'll have the blue guest chamber open for the future Lady Bellinger, won't you, Cooper? Well, really, I do Oh, think say no I... more. I'm one of Robert's oldest friends, and you're going to be his wife. Now, let's have a look at you. There he is. You passed with honors. That reminds me, we need a fourth at bridge. We are going this afternoon to old Rebecca Crozier at the Barclay College. Do you play? No. All I this guess. generation? <laughs> Mind you, Cheryl plays, but we're not quite in her class. She says we play a stingy game, don't you, Cheryl? Ooh, fairy stories at breakfast. Are you coming with us to see Auntie Crozier, darling? It depends. Now, that's too bad of you. You promised. Dad is a witness. How are you, my dears? Come in, come in. Rebecca, darling, you look wonderful. Murdoch, will you go and light the lamp? I'm sorry to have kept you all standing in the wind. Cheryl? 
Who is this charming young lady? This is Joan Webster, Rebecca, who's going to marry Robert Ballantra. Sure, I congratulate him. How do you do? Put down your things, everybody, anywhere. Make it under your own button. Mm -hmm. Well, how on earth could you manage with three people in a house like Arkna Crouch? Oh, I always had plenty of guests. Guests? They give so much work. Not my guests, my dear. Talkville, these are friends of mine. They've taken us on, the English family Robinson. How do you do? How do you do? This is Joan Webster. How do you do, Miss Webster? How do you do? I hope you've got a good long leave. Six more days. Well, it's certainly far enough from the war here. Plates, Talkville? Anything else, ma'am? No, thank you, mother. One, two, three, four, five and half for the little one. Do you know, talk when this young lady's going to be the mistress of your house for the duration? I hope you'll be very happy, though. I'm sure I shall. Are you the owner of Killorin? Really? How interesting. Do you know, we nearly took Killorin ourselves. We found it just a little bit too expensive. Your agent asked an enormous rent for it. I'm afraid that's the only income I ever get from Killorin. You see, for three years' rent, I can live there myself for six. That's Highland economics. Everybody suckling? No, no. Rebecca. Yes, please. I were to let my house, I should never live to enjoy the money I should get for it. Oh, you'll outlive us all. Akna Kreuz is a breeding place for Methuselahs. Look at Campbell. Is that your gardener who's giving the Cayley? Martin's invited. Campbell's diamond wedding. Quite a start on you, my dear. I'll catch up. Mm, I shall have to put in an appearance later on. But bridge first. Thank yes. You. Bridge first. Have you ever seen any Highland dancing? No, never. You ought to see our urban gathering in peacetime. Of course, it's not so big or so famous as Bremar or Inverness. But it has its own quality. You came through, Owen? Yes, the harbour was wonderful, and that lovely green island. Imagine it, full of yachts, big and small. And there's racing and highland games all day. And at night, at night, they give a ball. You can't imagine what a wonderful sight it is. The assembly rooms are all hung with special hangings in dark red. And the women wear tiaras, those that have them. And the place blazes with jewels. The men, the men are more splendid than the women. <laughs> with their velvet doublets and scarlet waistcoats, their lace cuffs and jabots, their buttons of gold and silver, their cairn gorns, their buckle shoes and their fillybergs of every shade and color. And the pipes play and we dance, we dance all night. <laughs> Till the sun shines through the curtains. Lovely. What does Philibeck mean? The kilt. It really means the little kilt is worn nowadays. Now, what about bridge? Joan doesn't play. Do you play, Mr. McNeil? I'm sorry, no. Dance the Scottish? I think so. Good. I suppose we ought to go back now. Oh, no, honey. Friends and 
neighbors. I ask a hundred thousand blessings on my father and mother. They are 60 years married this day. Peace and happiness be with them. The pride of the great Clan Campbell. Yeah. Campbell. <laughs> oh. I, no, 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 no. <laughs> I went down to her eight this morning. I know. I went into Moy Castle. Did you? Shall I tell you what it's like inside? Yes, please. It's just as you told me in the story. I saw the hall where McNeil feasted and the dungeon in the thickness of the wall. It, it's awful. And on the ramparts at the top, there's a stone. With a curse a... written on it. You've been inside. No, but I was young once. I had a nanny. No. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I've read it. It's a terrible, strong guess. Terrible. <laughs> now you know why McNeil dreads to enter the castle. Careful. Kenny, don't be silly. It's only you I love. You do? Not McNeil of Caloran. Yes, and you'll be a Campbell. Uh, John Campbell Caloran. I must tell my father that you're here. He'll be the proud man. You'll do nothing of the sort of McNeil at the Campbell's Cayley. Ah, uh, not be me, Hedda. Hey! That's a fine song. Not Brown Maiden, do you know? Do not play this! It goes... A Rome and not Brown Maiden. A Ream and not Brown Maiden. A row, 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 Maiden. You're the maid for me. Is that yourself, sir? Is this the way to treat an old friend on the day of his diamond wedding? We didn't want to intrude, Mr. Campbell. Here's length of good life to you and Mrs. Campbell. Thank you indeed, Killorn. Intrude, is it? <laughs> you and your lady must come in and meet Mrs. Campbell, and you'll have a drum with us. Talk well. I must go. You can't go now. It's going to be a grand kill. Just grand. It's very good of you, but Killorn knows I must get back. Lauren knows nothing of the sort. You must see the dancing. But I saw perfectly well from here, thank you. We've seen nothing yet, my lady. We've got three pipers. Three of them. Just by luck. They were ordered by the rich man on Killorn. But just by luck they couldn't get. It was the gale stopped them. Cheer up. They are your pipers. How do you do, Mr. Cameron? This way, sir. Excuse me, miss, and you, 
sir. May I be allowed to say that you were the best dancers at the Cayley? Thank you, Martin. Please, please, God. You know how important it is for me to get to Caloran. Please. Let the gale drop. Or let me get to the island somehow. Please. Please. Morning, Brady. Hello, Caloran. Martin Mike and Oren. Uh huh. Hello, Kenny. Good morning, Miss Webster. Wind's backing a bit. Uh huh. It's not blowing near so hard. Oh, yes, tomorrow we'll be crossing to Caloran. Or maybe the day after. But not today. Himself is going to Tobomori by the bus to see the dentist. Tooth aching this morning? No, but if he doesn't go now, there's no saying when the next gale will be. It's only then himself is the time. Uh huh. Saw so you at the Kelly. How old are you, Brady? I'll be 17. You'll be marrying soon. When the right man comes along. How old are you, Kenny? 18. Getting on, not thinking of taking a wife? Oh, I'll be called up soon. But anyway, I'd have to wait another three or four years. Or even more. Why is that, Kenny? It takes money to get married. How much? 20 pounds. <whistles> himself is asking that for half a share in the boat. Who's himself? Rory Father. Moore. Father. I should have thought he would have given you a half share as a wedding present, Kenny. Huh, sir, le decision. When Kenny can buy half, he'll get the other half for nothing right enough. Good day to you, my lady. Good day. Good day to you, Kiloran. I wish it was. Oh, it will be. Yes, 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 it will be. Oh, yes, yes, indeed. Yes, yes, it will be. Of course, I am not saying that it is not blowing as much as it was, but it is near the end of it. Indeed, it is just like the sun, my lady. It seems always biggest just before it sets. You're a poet, Rorivor. Do you think we can cross today? No, 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 my lady, no. Well, will you stand by in case it drops? I'll pay you for your time, of course. Well, you said yourself it might blow down. It's very important. I must get across. I'll pay you anything you ask. I will take you to Caloran as soon as it is humanly possible, my lady. And I will not be wanting extra payment for that. We'll be up at the house. And I will be in Tobermory. Fine doings indeed. That girl is so foolish. She is a woman already. Who is it? The Islanders. Oh, stay for lunch. Curry rabbit a la Puna. Doing it. Good. Hello, Joe. Hello. Hello. Talk, Will. Yes. Will you do me a very great favor? Yes. Will you help me to get to Caloran? If I had a fair sized boat, but I haven't, not even a small one. Rory would listen to you. If you asked him, he'd try to get me there. Besides, you're wasting your whole leave. I don't mind. Yes, you do. You love Calor, and you haven't been there for years. I don't mind. You won't ask him? No, you don't understand. It's his job to take us across. His duty, if you like. If he could, he would. Can't you wait till tomorrow? I can't ask him to risk his life or yours. He's been out in a gale often enough. The ship was in danger. It's different when people are in danger and need help. What? I want help desperately. Dressing Do you think it'll blow out tonight? I don't think so. Well, do you think they'll be allowed? Talk Most well. unlikely. Great news. Congratulate me, young lady. Torquil the Eagle is found. His good name's cleared. It was a fox that was killing the lambs. The shepherd saw it. 
The old boy's safe and sound up on Gorry's leap. Son. I'm off up there after lunch for the lure. By God, I hope I get him back. You coming? I'd like to. What about you? We'll be back by tea time. I think I'll stay here. Something else. So that's it. There ought to be a law about trees. You know, talk well. Please, ma'am, I'd like to be speaking to Miss Webster. Bridie wants to speak to you. What is it, Bridie? It's about the boat, miss. Don't be thinking of taking it out, miss. Himself will murder Kenny. Nonsense. I look after your father. Anyway, Kenny's a man. He's taken out the boat alone many times. But never in a gale. Himself will never take it out in a southwesterly gale. But it's blowing out. Your father said so. It's going down all the time. Himself would never take it out today. And what about the money Kenny's going to earn? Do you want to have to wait another four years to marry him? Well, I would then, if it has to be. Some folks there are can be waiting a day to satisfy their passion. What are you saying? Some folks there are who want to drown fine young men and break poor girls' hearts so that they can be bedded one day sooner. You better get out. I'd be getting out tonight, please. Who are you to be giving orders? You that come in the city with your airs and graces and your heart of stone? Why should you think that our lives don't matter at all? And the yours are so important. <laughs> but you don't understand. <laughs> Friday, don't cry. You think that I'm risking Kenny's life when I could stay safely here, but I'm not safe here. Oh, Friday, I'm on the brink of losing everything I've ever wanted, ever since I could want anything. What do you think you're doing? I'm after taking Miss Webster to Gilloran. You're after losing Rory's boat and drowning, the pair of you. Don't be a fool, Kenny. How much did she pay you? Twenty pounds. Now who's the fool? I'll make it up to you. Come on, boy, give her back her dirty money. Oh, Kiloran, I can't do it, I promise. She made me promise and that's the truth of it. Oh, Kiloran. Where's Miss Webster? She's in the flat. Please, Kiloran, don't let her be taking Kenny. Go on, say something. I will. Are you a complete fool? Well? How dare you speak to me like that? Is it not enough that you've been told that you cannot sail today? Do you think you know better than folk who have lived here all their lives? Rory said it was going down. Kenny said so too. What do you expect Kenny to say? You bought him, did you not? There's no need to shout at me. Why, the lad has never seen 20 pounds in his life. If you must commit suicide, why can't you do it in Manchester? Why'd you have to come here? Don't shout at me. You're insulting. And stop bothering about me. Why, what about Kenny? Well, what about him? What about Bridie? What about the crew of the lifeboat that'll have to put out the savior? What about their wives? What about their children? Do you think that I'm standing here wasting time over you? I'm not interested in your reasons. Are you not? Are you interested in anything but yourself? I do know how to mind my own business. That won't carry you far on this island or on Kaloran. You can't have this island. And you can have Kaloran. Fine. Then you won't be in any hurry to get there. You can't think you know more about these waters than Rory. Why do you think he refused to take you? Because he's as stubborn as you are? Because he wanted to go to the dentist. Oh, go ahead then. And drown yourself. You heard, I suppose. They heard you in Tobermory. Talk will. Mm -hmm. They'll never make it. 
What do you expect me to do? Lock her in her room? She'd only jump out of the window. She's as stubborn as a mule. She doesn't realize the danger. And you're the last person to stop her. I? She's running away from you. Say that again. <laughs> Hold on there. Give me that case. Type? Sometimes are you? Always. If we can stay on our course and right side up, we've got a chance. Aren't we on our course? Every mile near to Caloran, we're two miles near to Scarborough. Is that dangerous? Yes. Why? For a fricker. Whirlpool. You never finished the story about the Norwegian prince who just said that two ropes broke. What happened to the one made from the hair of faithful maidens? It held until the tide turned. Nothing is stronger than true love. No, nothing. Are you feeling sick? Oh, no. <laughs> no, I'm all right. Go on. But one maiden was untrue to her lover, only one. And when that strand broke, the whole rope broke with it. Oh, 
This is the way to fail. The engine's washed out. I've got to take it apart. What can I do? Keep failing. And pain. Got it, Rick.
So, you're back. Big strong man. in my room and that's where you'll sleep. My dear chap, my very dear chap, you've missed the experience of a lifetime. Have I? You certainly have. While you've been messing about in boats, a new chapter's been written in the history of Falconry. Oh, you've got him back. Ah, listen to this. He was up on the warren and came to the lure like a lamb. Like a hawk, I mean. Then the gillis suggested a hunt for these, this fox that's been killing the lambs. So we went off up the tullock. And by Gad, we found the fox. And by Jimmy Christmas, he caught it. Caught it? Who? Torquil! Torquil the hunter! Torquil the fox hunter! Stooped at the blighter as though it was a rabbit. And killed him stone dead. Here he is. Dog fox! Twenty pounds if he's an ounce. I'm going to have the brush mounted for you, talk old boy. Now what have you got to say? Where is he? There! Over the door! Isn't he a pippin? Torquil! Come on! <laughs> Whoa! No, 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 no! Tony! Hey! What? Get on to him! You must think I'm awful. I don't think anyone's awful. Not even when I'm breaking my neck to marry a rich man. Well, what's wrong with that? But I thought you didn't care about money. Who says so? I'd swim to Oban for ten pounds. Glasgow for twenty. And what about Torquil? He'd do it for fifteen. Oh. But I thought that you and... Rebecca Crozier and Torquil were perfectly happy without money. What else can we do? Well, you could sell Ereg, and Rebecca could sell Art Nacroix, and Torquil could sell Caloran. Yes. But money isn't everything. Now go to sleep. Thank you. Good night, Katrina. And if you count the beans, your prayers will come true. I'm not praying tonight. Onto your perch. That's it. Torquil, you greedy swine! Get off. do anything with my hair. I wonder what happened to my wedding dress. A mermaid will marry in it. I was Kenny this morning. Butter wouldn't melt in his mouth. He's helping Rari with the boat. And who's the Caloran? Not the Colonel. He's got his ego back. Not Caloran. 
The only passengers I can see are you and three pipers. Is the boat coming? Yes, it's coming. I'd better go down and meet him. Always the little lady doing the right thing. I'm sorry, I can't change myself. You're all right as you are. Bye-bye, Mrs. Potts. I'm for the bus. Goodbye, Katrina. And thank you for everything. something for me? It depends. I don't care where or when, but somewhere, sometime. Will you have the pipers play the role in that round maiden? It might be done. Will you do something for me before I go away? It depends. I want you to kiss me. thousand times. Once upon a time, hundreds of years ago, MacNeil of Kiloran took a beautiful wife from the mainland, but she was in love with a cousin of hers, a MacLean who held my castle. After a year and a day, when her husband was away ravaging the mainland, she escaped from Kiloran and took refuge in my castle with her lover. One black night, Kiloran came. He besieged and took the castle and killed every soul except the two lovers. There's a deep dungeon just off the banqueting hall. It's a well with nine feet of water in it and a rounded stone, just big enough for a man to stand on or drown. Kiloran stripped the two lovers, chained them together and threw them into the dungeon. He sat in the great hall, feasted and mocked them while they held one another above the water till their strength failed and they dragged 
one another down. Before she died, the woman cursed Kiloran and every future MacNeil of Kiloran if they should ever cross the threshold of the castle. There's the curse, carved in stone on the ramparts, there to this day. It's a terrible, strong curse, it goes. This is the curse of Katrina MacLean of Eric. My curse on MacNeil of Kiloran and every MacNeil after him, if he shall ever cross the threshold of mine, never shall he leave it a free man. in Rory Moore's boat half the hell I've raised. And I was lying to you, too. I'm not really afraid of this place. I know. Never shall he leave it a free man. He shall be chained to a woman to the end of his days, and he shall die in his chains. Who? 